Hey guys, it's Zach here from CodingMadeSimple.com and welcome to another GameMaker Studio 2 tutorial. Today what I want to do is go in depth with variables so you can actually understand all the different types of variables within GameMaker and how to use them accordingly. So I'm going to be going over five different variables that we can use within our projects. So the first one's going to be our instance variable. The second one is a local variable. The third one is a global variable. The fourth one, we're going to be touching the built-in variables within GameMaker Studio. And then the fifth is our macros, which is very powerful, but I don't believe gets used as often as it should. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to go ahead and create an object. Let's go to the create event in this object. And here's where you can start writing your code. I'm going to touch on what an instance variable is. So essentially what an instance variable is, it's created in an actual object itself and can only be used within that object. So for example, you know, we can create something like um, our move speed equals zero. That's an integer and that is an instance variable. So we can take this from the create event and we can use them. This, we can use this variable throughout all of our code and events. So there's many different types. So we just created an integer variable here. We can also create floats. So let's say um, move speed two equals 4.3 F. Actually, it doesn't like the F. So a float is essentially a decimal. Pretty simple. Uh, we can say another variable here, which is going to be a string. So we can say moving. That's another variable. And then we can also use booleans. So let's say move speed or equals false. So true or false. So these are essentially the four variables that you're going to be using most often. There are more different, uh, there, there are different variables, but these are the ones you're probably going to be using the most. So you got the integer, the float, the string, and the boolean. So like I said before, these variables can only be accessed in this actual object itself. So if we were coding this in say Java or something like that, we would make this a private variable. That's essentially what it is. This is just a private variable. Now that doesn't work in GameMaker obviously because when you're setting up these instant variables, they're immediately private. Now there are exceptions to the rule on accessing these variables from different objects. And so if I create another object here, what I can do assuming that this object was created before this object in the room, we could say object zero dot move speed equals five. And just by using that dot there and then accessing the variable, we're, we're now actually hopping into this code here and we're changing that variable from another object, which can be very useful. But typically you shouldn't be doing that or not too often. What you want to do is keep variables as private as possible and so there's no confusion in the long term. Instance variables are set up so you can create anything from let's say a velocity, speed, uh, your facing direction. I mean it really controls a lot of the attributes and what your character is doing in the game. The next type of variable I want to look at is a local variable. Now this goes even more private than our instance variables that we just created here. So if we created let's say a step event and we wanted to do something where we just needed a value that we needed to use in this event and then afterwards it being destroyed, that's gonna be a local variable. So to initialize a local variable, you're gonna say var and you can say whatever, i equals zero. You can now treat this as an instance variable like the create event, but it can only be used in the step event, it can't be used in any other events and you can't actually access this variable from any other object. So this might be handy for maybe doing a for loop, maybe getting a temporary X and Y positioning system through a while loop, something like that. I find that these come in handy pretty often. And let's go ahead and just make a quick example on how you can use this. So let's say that we had a controller here, all right, that wanted to create something, let's say a spawning system, something like that. In the creative event, we can say var and we'll say uh, player equals and here we can create instance create depth uh, 0 0 depth negative 1 object object 0 what we're essentially doing here is we are creating this object 
into this player temporary or local variable. So what we can do with that now is access that dot parameter and change different attributes around with it. So if you had, let's say, an enemy or a spaceship or something, and maybe you wanted random fire rates for when they shoot, or maybe you wanted random health points or something like that. Now we can say player dot, and here you can see all of the instance variables that we created. So let's say move speed, and we can equal that to, let's say, a random range from zero to 50. If we put this into a quick for loop, i is less than five, i plus plus, and we pop this in there. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna create five different instances of our object zero, and they're all gonna be a random move speed. Now you could definitely just go into our object zero here and do it just like that, but that's a use for a local variable and how we can create that instance, change a variable around, and then completely destroy the, the local variable player after that for loop is done. These are the two most used variables from what I've seen in my development of video games. But now let's touch on the next variable, which is a global variable. Now, this is not very commonly used, and I wouldn't recommend that you do this for a lot of variables in your game. But what you can do is say global dot, let's say move speed five equals 100. And now, as you can see, it was colored differently because that is a global variable. In other words, this can be accessed from every object in the game, even creation codes and rooms to everything. Scripts, uh, just make sure that this is initiated into the game before something else tries to call it. So here we can say global.movespeed5 equals 100. And just like that, we don't need to use a dot parameter. We don't need to use a local variable or anything like that to access it. We can literally just change it just like that. This is most commonly used for, let's say, a gold system in the game, or maybe uh, health points in the game, maybe a global score. Essentially, only use a global variable for just one thing, just one instance of what's going to be in that game. So like I said, you're only going to have one score. You're only going to have one you know, currency system in the game. You're only going to have, you know, you don't want to use this for... Uh, different like positioning systems for different enemies or players that's not what this is intended for so now we have our built-in variables and yo-yo games actually has a complete documentation list of all of the built-in variables within game maker that can be found in the description but essentially what a built-in variable is is something just like this so it's what makes game maker game maker it uses the methods that are already created on the back end that you can use at your disposal just by typing in that little line. It's the same thing as creating a script. Let's say move over and doing all sorts of actions in this script. And now we can easily call this move over script from anywhere in the game. It's the same thing, but these built in variables are already created for us and we should use them any opportunity we can and make things as easy as possible for us. Now the next one are macros or constants and this I believe you should use a lot especially when creating games that can have different um, maybe coloring systems, um, maybe different um, power-ups or something like that where you can say you can create an instance variable like let's say power power-up equals and instead of saying zero and creating a map down where like zero equals um, no power up. One equals, uh, let's say the shooting power up, right? Two equals bigger jump. So we can definitely create something like that where, you know, if power up equals one, then we, you know, we can shoot and do all these different things, but it gets confusing, especially if you have a lot of them. So what you can do is create a script and I can call it init macros. And here we can set up macros where we can have a value towards it and now just call it by its name to make it less confusing. So if I say hashtag macro and I let's name it no power up and it's going to be zero. All right, now we can create another macro, which is let's say shooting power up and it equals one. 
Let's make another macro where we have jumping power up and equals two. Let's make it all congruent here. So now essentially we've created variables that have this value, but they're named that. So I can go into my object zero here. I can call the script initiate macros that we've created. And now instead of power up equals zero, I can say power up equals no underscore PU. And that is essentially the same thing as saying zero. And so now what we can do is make it way less confusing for you by saying, um, we can still say if power up equals zero, then we can say power up equals shooting power up. When you're colliding with, let's say a power up object or something like that. All right, so now that shooting power up has the value of one. So it's the same thing. Now we're just making it more efficient for you to actually dive into the code and make it a lot easier to read and hopefully avoid headaches for future development in your game. So that's gonna be it. I hope you learned something here. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's go ahead and try for 100 likes this time and I will catch you guys later. Peace.